What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Islam Makachev's team breaks silence on USADA testing. Heading into Bobby Green's fight with Grant Dawson this past weekend, the lightweight vet lobbed a pretty significant accusation at Russian fighters, claiming that they train in a mosque where they are inaccessible to USADA for months on end. In the wake of Green's win over Dawson, the comments caught the attention of AKA head coach Javier Mendez, who responded to the allegations during a recent episode of his Javier Mendez podcast. Number one, if yeah. you're at the mosque, if you're at the mosque, you think USADA is going to go to the mosque and, and, and they're going to knock, 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 we're going to test you? No, they go to your home. You have to sign a paper that says your whereabouts, which tells them where you are going to be at certain points of your uh, uh, stay, wherever you're at. You have to do You have to do it. It's mandatory. You know, it's saying, oh, they can enter the mosque. What, what are you talking they about? They stay in a hotel. They can get to them anytime they want to. As Islam Akachev prepares to defend his title against Charles Oliveira, he'll likely wind up fielding questions from media members in regards to Green's comments. Shout out to our first comments on yesterday's video. Thanks for the support. Next up, let's take a look at Michael Bisping fires back at UFC competitor. One championship head, Chatri Sidyotong, recently made waves when he took aim at the quality of striking displayed in UFC fights, alleging that the average UFC fighter is a former collegiate wrestler who learned to strike, with the result being a subpar product in comparison to one, where he says fighters go after already achieving a high level of success. The comments caught the attention of UFC Hall of Famer Michael Bisping, who fired back in a recent episode of his Believe You Me podcast. But in mixed martial arts, because he's going on, he's talking about the wrestling side of things, and he's saying that that causes a disparity in terms of the striking ability. Well, bring your best strikers over to the UFC and put them in, put them up against, they'll be lightweights, put them up against Islam Makachev and see what happens. Right. Guaranteed to get choked right. out pretty quickly. So far, no response from Sidyatong. However, as we've seen, the UFC has no interest in cross-promoting with other brands, meaning we'll never get the chance to see the two promotions' best fighters go head-to-head. -head. With one's weekly Friday fights installment approaching at the end of the week, the one championship head could fire back at both Bisping and John Jones in the coming days. Next up, let's take a look at Nate Diaz fight update. Nate Diaz may not be returning to the UFC anytime soon if his latest plans come to fruition. After going the distance with Jake Paul in a boxing match this summer, Diaz seems to have his sights set on a rematch rather than competing in the cage next. After Paul alleged that Diaz didn't want to risk his reputation and lose to him in an MMA fight, the Stockton superstar fired back on Twitter, writing, You're full of I didn't ask for I'll fight you tomorrow in MMA. The problem is you suck and I don't work for FL, dumb you do. Rematches in boxing, trilogies in MMA. You need time to train. Anyway, you suck. New Year's Eve is good. Although Diaz and Conor McGregor have continued to tease a trilogy fight with one another, the Stockton superstar seems to have his sights set on at least one more showdown with Paul before making his return to the Octagon. In the meantime, McGregor will look to make his highly anticipated return next year to face Michael Chandler and set the stage for a potential trilogy bout with Diaz. I'm, I'm, so Nate Diaz must have just said, no, I'm not fighting Jake in MMA. Yeah, that's crazy. I wonder if he's like, oh, yeah, who knows what he's thinking. Maybe maybe he's thinking that kid's stronger and bigger than I thought. Cause, or you'd think, be like, God, there's, it's going to be a fucking huge fight. I'm going to make maybe $10 million. <laughs> Why not just go fight him? But at some point, probably not about the money really at all. Now, let's shift gears and take a look at UFC updates. October has already delivered some big fight news, and this week was no different. Ahead of the scheduled UFC Fight Night Sao Paulo card on November 4th, news has surfaced that Curtis Blades has been forced out of his scheduled bout with Jalton Almeida. As a result, Derek Lewis will be stepping in on short notice in hopes of making it two straight after recently defeating Marcos Rogerio de Lima this summer at UFC 291. The following month at UFC 296, the promotion's final pay-per-view card of the year, rude boy Randy Brown will take on Muslim Salikov in an exciting clash of styles. Brown will be looking to build on a June win over Wellington Terman, while Salikov will be looking to bounce back from a June loss to Nicholas Dalby. Changing gears and looking ahead to the new year, Ilya Topuria has shared some exciting news while making an appearance on Spanish TV show El Hormiguero, revealing that he and Alexander Volkanovsky are likely to face off at UFC 297 on January 20th. The fight hasn't been finalized yet, however, it sounds as though the UFC is working towards making the headliner official sooner rather than later.
Last but certainly not least in the way of UFC updates, we have some exciting news regarding longtime fan favorite Cub Swanson, who revealed via Twitter that after dealing with nerve pain in his back for years now, he's officially undergone successful surgery. Swanson gave his fans an update via social media, writing, back surgery was a success. I've been dealing with this intense nerve pain for about three years now. So far, no timeline as to when Cub Swanson will be looking to return to action. However, now that he'll be able to train pain-free, fans can expect to see Swanson at his best. Next up, let's take a look at Dana White reveals the truth on cancelled fight. Saturday's UFC Fight Night Dawson vs. Green Card saw a scheduled bout between Philip Lenz and Ian Kutalaba cancelled at the last minute as a result of Lenz falling ill on the day of the fight. During the post-fight press conference, Dana White spoke with media members, giving behind-the-scenes information on what took place leading up to the cancellation of the bout. He didn't feel good. We sent doctors to look at him. Uh, they, they worked with him. They did some stuff. He said he still didn't feel good, so the fight got pulled. So and we, we, pay, we paid Kutalaba. Uh, so I think it was his decision. Since joining the UFC, cancellations have continued to follow Linz. After having his latest scrap with Ian Kutalaba cancelled amid a three-fight win streak, it'll be interesting to see what the future has in store for the light heavyweight in the new year. Next, let's take a look at Fighter Gets Removed from UFC Roster. According to the UFC Roster Tracker account, Jake Collier has been removed from the promotion's roster after a late September loss to Muhammad Usman. The loss was the fourth straight for Collier, who was just 3-7 and seven in his last 10 fights. So far, it doesn't appear as though Collier has posted about the news on social media. However, at 34 years old, he now finds himself as a free agent. As a seasoned UFC vet who had been with the promotion since 2014, and the fact that the landscape of the MMA industry has changed quite a bit, that Collier could find a home with another high-profile organization going forward should he choose to continue his career. Last but certainly not least, let's take a look at Kevin Holland gets called out by fighter. Joaquin Buckley delivered an entertaining win over Alex Morono this past weekend at UFC Fight Night Dawson vs. Green, making his second straight win at 170 pounds. With Buckley proving that he's one of the most exciting fighters in the division, he believes that the time is now for he and Kevin Holland to give the fans a rematch of their 2020 showdown. While speaking at the post-fight press conference, following his win over Morono, Buckley called his shot, advocating for a fight with Holland. I think that'd be big. You know, we always going back and forth and it's, it's a friendly competition at the end of the day. I like Kevin Holland's uh, personality. I like what he does and uh, the Octagon to promote itself. And if I'm able to get back and uh, get that win, you know, it's just going to show everybody that I have improved, you know, in this company. Since the last time the two fought, Buckley has gone seven and three, picking up four performance of the night awards in the process. On the flip side, Holland is fresh off a split decision loss to Jack Della Maddalena, which snapped a two fight win streak of his own. Over the years, both men have continued to keep up the busy schedule, and while a fight between the two could still take place before the end of this year, the most likely scenario is that the UFC looks to book a contest between the two men for early 2024. Paulo Costa is claiming that Hamza Chimaev is sabotaging his fight camp. He claims that they're calling him in the middle of the night and trying to keep him awake with jet lag. On top of that, he's also accusing them of setting him up at the hotel together while they have no security. Here's what Paulo Costa's coach had to say about the situation. Every attempt to sabotage Team Costa here, and it's like adding lava. They stayed at our same hotel. They pulled up in Jeep classes. They pulled up in Escalades. We were in the lobby together. We were outside in the parking lot. They were in the out lobby. Tensions were high because, I mean, the last time they saw each other at the UFCPI, you guys saw what almost went down. You know, the whole world saw that. 10 million people saw that video. So what is the reason why three weeks ago we're staying at a hotel with no security? And, and after that happened, people started calling us in the middle of the night, waking us up. So there's just been some uh, some sabotaging going on on his end, uh, trying to keep us with the jet lag. The MMA community is going off at Paulo Costa after his elbow surgery just weeks before the fight. Paulo is being accused of ducking Hamzat and making an excuse before the fight can happen, in case it doesn't happen or he loses. Here's what fans had to say. This dude never intended on actually fighting Chimaev. He's always been scared to go one-on-one -on -one with the wolf. Sounds like something a fighter would say if they weren't being cleared to fight. Bro is scared. He shat his pants when the fight is getting close. There's a high chance that the fight isn't happening. He sounded and looked dejected and distracted in that interview. There's definitely more to the story. Top comments. Bro, imagine all this talk about Jones' last fight and he loses to Stipe. I don't know how Paulo Costa is going to try to pull this off, but if he does and wins, you honestly have to put him as number three in the middleweight division. Hamzat is going for a flying armbar the first five seconds of the fight if Paulo goes in. 
I love Drew Dober, such an exciting fighter to watch. They need to increase fighters' pay. The UFC is a multi-billion dollar company. They can afford to increase pay and bonuses. They're still giving out the same 50k they were giving out for performance of the night over 10 years ago. Make sure to leave a comment and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.